Welcome back to PLC Fundamentals. In this episode, we are tackling a crucial skill for any automation engineer, PLC troubleshooting. Well, so far, you may have been able to create your first PLC program with ladder logic. Now let's find out what to do when things go wrong. Whether your motor won't start, a sensor isn't operating or your program just isn't behaving, I will walk you through step-by-step -step process to diagnose and fix common PLC issues. So let's get started. Well, in case of the problem, so the step one is to check the status of power supply. Well, each PLC has a power supply module, whether it is integrated or a separate power supply module, check for the status of the power supply. The input of the power supply, for example, in our case, it is Siemens S7300 PLC power supply PS307. So make sure the input voltage is within the normal range. The output voltage in our case is DC24 volt. So ensure that connection, make sure each module of the PLC is getting its due power supply. For example, the CPU 3152DP is taking the power supply 24 volt from the power supply module, the digital input, digital output card, analog input and analog output card. All these cards are taking the proper power supply from the power supply module. You can check the voltage levels with a voltmeter, whether the DC volt is within the normal range, it shouldn't get out of the range. Similarly, the AC volt must be within the normal range. The power supply must have proper earth connection and the PLC panel must be properly ground. So make sure each module gets the power supply. So this is the first step to ensure the proper power supply to each and every module in the PLC panel. Well, step two, is to look for the visual status of the control panel. So visually inspect the control panel. Make sure there is no blown fuse or there is no tripped breaker or operated overload relay, for example. So make sure those breakers, fuses and relays are normal. They are not open, they are not uh, so make sure the breakers connection are tight, the fuses have not been blown and the relay, the overload relay has not been operated. Also look for loose cables, joints in faulty relays and connectors as well. Sometimes we have noticed that relays, the connections of the relays are not passing the voltage. So make sure the relay connectors. So make sure the relay contacts are properly passing the signal. The connectors must have the loop verified. It must be closed. You know, you can tally the connections of the control panel with an electrical drawing of the control panel. So it is good and it is important to have the understanding of the electrical drawing associated with each control panel. You can also make sure that the connectors are properly passing the signals. Sometimes it has been noted that the input of the connector has a signal on it, but it is not passing towards its output. And that is the case of a faulty connector. So a terminal block in the control panel may have a faulty status. It may not pass the signal out of. It may not pass the signal. It has been noted that loose cable connections have also caused the problem. So make sure the connections are tight. There are no loose cables. There are no joints. Avoid joints as much as possible. The contacts of the relay and the terminal blocks and other connectors in the control panel must have its normal status. It must pass the signal properly. Well, moving on to the step three, make sure all the interlocks or the hardware interlocks, they are normal, right? Um, check for the emergency push button, whether it is operated or not. Also look for the local stop, local start push buttons. Sometimes these push buttons also cause problems. Uh, they are actually operated and they are, well, the program will then uh, it will not let the equipment to be operated because these are the hardware interlocks and they must be uh, verified before starting any equipment from the operator panel. 
also look for some process interlocks there may have been some start operation and protection interlocks sometimes you get you give command to an equipment the equipment will then trip after some time because the speed monitor or the motion sensor is not having its value properly communicated to the plc so also look for those interlocks as well so the verification of start operation and protection interlocks is also vital for the operation of any equipment moving on to the step four ensure proper communication between plc and hmi so make sure the operator is giving command and that command is properly communicated to the plc program that has also been the case in most of the problems that we have not been able to establish a communication between the hmi and plc so make sure the communication between plc and hmi is intact you must look for the status of the PLC CPU LEDs. The PLC is in, is in the stop mode. Well, it is of no use to give commands to the equipment. So look for the status of the LEDs on the CPU. If there is an internal fault indication, well, that points out to problem with the program inside the PLC. If there is an external fault, well, it may point out to any problem with the Profibus or any other communication media which the PLC is using. If the program is not in the run mode, well, that means that the, the program is not being processed by the PLC. So the process cannot get started. Ensure the PLC is in the run mode, which means the CPU is properly scanning the program. It is listening to the field signals and it will issue commands. So that is the normal healthy status of the PLC CPU. If there are any other LEDs which are pointing out to any faulty status, for example, internal fault, external fault, or power supply, or any other fault, you may tally those LEDs with the manual of the PLC CPU. And the manual may guide to the specific problem with that LED with that faulty status. Well, you can visually inspect the status of the PLC input output cards. If there is any red LED on the input or output card of the PLC module, well, that means a faulty input output card. So ensure the PLC card is healthy and there is no problem with it. The status of the input output cards can also be observed in the hardware configuration of the PLC project. For example, if you are using a step 7 program, in the semantic manager you can go to the hardware configuration and upon the online monitoring you can observe the status of the IO card of the PLC, whether the card is in proper and healthy status or it is faulty. So that online Hardware monitoring can give you an idea of the status of the input and output cards. The next step is to look for the online status of the PLC program. If you go to the diagnostic buffer, for example, in TIA portal or any step 7 PLC program, it is a file that keeps the record of every PLC event. Uh, that if the PLC is in the stop mode, it will tell you the reason why the PLC has been pushed into the stop mode if there is any failure or either whether it is any interrupt well all those events will be logged in the diagnostic buffer and that will give you idea about what has happened to the plc cpu so the diagnostic buffer must be saved while troubleshooting a plc if we are using an ethernet cable for the communication between hmi and plc we can ping the connection and we can also loop test the connection. We can use a tester, an Ethernet tester, which will make sure whether the communication cable between the PLC and HMI is properly communicating or it is faulty. If we have a Profibus or Modbus, we can check for the connectivity of these cables. So loop testing is one of the key aspects of any PLC troubleshooting, whether it is Ethernet cable, it is Profibus, Modbus, or any other communication media. Well, the proper testing is mandatory if we are using a fiber optic cable we can loop test with the light signal well sometime a technician may tell you that the digital or analog signal is properly coming onto the plc input card so for that you will go to the hardware monitoring 
of the PLC hardware and we'll look whether that specific signal is coming on to the PLC input card or not. The verification of input channels and input signals is mandatory. You may also verify the status of the input channel. Well, a channel may get faulty due to an abnormal signal coming onto the input card of the PLC. To make sure whether the channel is faulty or okay, or whether the signal is coming onto the input card, you simply go to the PLC program or the hardware configuration and look whether that specific channel is okay or not. Similarly, the PLC output channel can be verified. The status of the PLC output channel can also be verified by forcing the signal onto the specific channel. So you simply go to the program, the PLC program, and you force this specific output channel. And a technician can check whether the digital output signal, for example, in this case, the 24 volt are coming onto the output card, the 24 volt are coming onto that specific channel or not. So this is how you verify the output channel of the PLC output card. So the status of the output channels on the output cards can also be verified by forcing the signals on those specific channels. So these were the 10 steps you can take to troubleshoot any faulty scenario. That's it for now. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section. Subscribe to my channel and see you in the next video.